Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Huerta announces UAV registration surpasses manned aircraft, a Fokker D8 replica is for sale, the Gulfstream G500 completes flutter testing. I'm Brie Cross, it's February 11th, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. FAA Administrator Michael Huerta told a UAV conference Monday that the number of drones now in its registry has surpassed the number of manned aircraft registered by the agency. Huerta said that more than 325,000 people have registered their unmanned aircraft since the program launched on January 21st. Huerta said, quote, we're very encouraged by the registration numbers we've seen so far. Safety is at the heart of the new registration system. We need to bring the unmanned aircraft enthusiasts into the culture that has characterized aviation throughout history, that is a culture of safety and a culture of responsibility. While comparing the number of drone registrations to manned aircraft registration sounds impressive, it must be remembered that the FAA themselves had forecast that up to 1 million drones would be sold over the last Christmas season. It might be well to also remember that the Academy of Model Aeronautics has fostered a culture of safety and responsibility in the operation of unmanned model aircraft since 1936. We believe credit should be given where it is due. If you're looking for an exquisite Fokker D8, we know where one might be available. A project to build an authentic replica of a World War I Fokker D8, begun by Meal Good in Rhinebeck, New York in the 1970s, has recently been completed and is being offered for sale. The website, earlyareo.com, reports that the project was finished by noted World War I aircraft builder Fred Murren in Pennsylvania for New York aviation enthusiast Brian Collin. It is thought to be the most authentic representation of the fighter in the United States. The only caveat is that the airplane currently has a static engine, meaning that it is only for display. But the aircraft could be flown if a working engine were installed. The airplane has historically correct cowlings and detailed spandu machine guns, ammo chutes, and boxes. It features printed lozenge, hand stenciling, and brush wing finish, according to the website. The Fokker D8 was nicknamed the Flying Razor because its clean, single-wing design was very difficult to see in flight. After the break, Gulfstream G500 flight testing continues. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website, or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. Flight testing continues on the Gulfstream G500. As it is reported, Gulfstream has completed flutter testing, achieving another milestone in the new aircraft's flight test program. Gulfstream's Dan Nail said in part, quote, The G500 has accomplished a great deal since we launched the flight test program in May 2015. With three aircraft in flight, the program has surpassed 430 flight test hours over more than 105 flights. Since the first test aircraft took to its first flight on May 18, 2015, the aircraft has surpassed more than 320 flight hours. It has reached a maximum speed of Mach 0.999 and a maximum altitude of 53,000 feet. The G500 is part of Gulfstream's new family of clean sheet aircraft, the G500 and G600. Gulfstream has conducted more than 43,000 hours of testing for both aircraft and Gulfstream's lab facilities. The G500 is expected to receive type certification from the FAA and EASA in 2017. It's scheduled to enter service in 2018. It's Thursday, which means that it's time for an Aero Community Update, highlighting news and information about the incredible people and organizations that populate the Airborne Partnership Initiative behind Airborne Unlimited. The Aircraft Electronics Association, known as the AEA, is part of our Airborne Partnership Initiative team and their presence is felt in all areas of aviation. 
as avionics continues to become an important and indispensable subcomponent of modern aircraft, common representation of the avionic industries and those who support it also becomes critically important. That's where the AEA fits into the picture. Founded in 1957, the AEA membership includes manufacturers of avionics equipment, instrument repair facilities, instrument manufacturers, airframe manufacturers, test equipment manufacturers, major distributors, engineers, and educational institutions. In partnering with the AEA, ANN took the initiative to produce a live televised program we call the New Product Introduction. In this program, we interviewed the various vendors that were participating in AEA's annual convention. It was the success of this program that led to our follow-on success at Oshkosh last year that we called the Airborne Innovation Preview. And speaking of AEA's annual convention, it's just around the corner as the AEA International Convention and Trade Show is scheduled for April 27th through the 30th in Orlando, Florida. Once again, ANN will be there to cover the event, and we will continue to feature the new products introduction live. After these messages, F-35 Pilot reaches 500 hours in type. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, Safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. A 61st Fighter Squadron pilot made history earlier this month as the first Luke Air Force Base pilot to achieve 500 flight hours in an F-35 Lightning II. Lieutenant Colonel Matthew Hayden achieved this milestone flying a routine training mission. Seaport Airlines has filed a voluntary petition for Chapter 11 reorganization in the U.S. Bankruptcy Court for the District of Oregon. The Board of Directors has determined that reorganization is the best path forward for the airline to achieve long-term viability. The FAA has validated a Transport Canada STC held by Maxcraft Avionics for installation of the Sky 899 TCAS 1 system or upgrade of existing Sky 497 Skywatch in numerous models of the Beach King Air. The system detects transponder equipped aircraft that may pose a threat. The Air Power Museum has paid homage to its longtime president, Mike Gretz, who has recently gone west. The Antique Airfield reports on its website that the Air Power Museum has renamed the Library of Flight as the Mike Gretz Library of Flight. The 18th and final primary mirror segment is installed on what will be the biggest and most powerful space telescope ever launched. The final mirror installation marks an important milestone in the assembly of the agency's James Webb Space Telescope. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Okay, Warbird fans, it's time to check your wallets and get ready to bid. Albania plans to auction off about 40 former Russian military aircraft later this month. The BBC relays a report from the AFP News Service that indicates the aircraft were all manufactured by either the Soviet Union or China. They will only be sold for historic value and only for a civilian purpose. Each aircraft will be sold individually. The inventory includes multiple MiG-19s, MiG-21s, Yak-18s, and Mi-4 helicopters. It's not yet known if any of the aircraft are airworthy, but judging from the images provided by AFP to the BBC, they are all in need of restoration. The estimated value of the total inventory of less than $500 is another clue as to their possible airworthiness. AFP reports that there has been interest expressed from the U.S. as well as Greece, Germany, and France. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday 
with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.